Hi, welcome to the channel. My name's Dave Peck and I'm a landscape photographer, videographer and YouTuber. Now, a few weeks ago, a company called Dehancer approached me to see if I would review their software. And their software is a film emulation software, which has taken many, many years to put together. It's available as a plugin for Lightroom, Photoshop, DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, Capture One, along with various others. I'll leave a link to their website at the end of this so you can have a little look. And there are over 60 film presets. Before we start though, just need to say that they're not paying me for this. They have provided me with a copy of the software for me to review, have a play with, uh, and give my opinions on, which I will do. But if you like what you see, they have given me a code which will allow you to have 10% off if you decide to purchase any or some or all of the plugins. My journey in photography started in 1974. I know I don't look old enough. Um, and obviously in, that, in those moments, it was all about film. So I don't wanna bore you with my history. If you wanna see that, I'll leave a link to my introduction video at the back of this video so you can go and have a look at it. But let me just say I've had years and years of experience with Kodak, Fuji, Ilford over the years. I've processed them, I've printed them, I've developed them, I've adjusted them, uh, and all of that hopefully gives me the um, experience to tell you whether I feel these are really good or not. And the first thing I will say is that looking at some of these films, it took me right, right back to those days. That's how good they are. So let's dive in to Lightroom and I'll talk you through the Lightroom module for Dehancer. So here we are in Lightroom and yesterday I went out knowing that I was going to do a review for a dehancer I went out to a place called Dungeness in the south of England because they've got some very interesting architecture it's a bit of a desert um, and some interesting shoots things to shoot and I've shot these couple of images which we're going to go through with you um, I've also got this one because this one I processed a couple of days ago I just go to the develop module um, and I wanted to show you this one because before you go into Dehancer, there are a few things that you need to know about Lightroom. So first of all, um, actually we'll go back to that in a second. So the first of all, you need to get rid of all of the sharpening. Okay, now I've left this on and you can see that even with the sharpening there, we've got some halos appearing around the edge because I didn't realize that actually Dehancer have their own sharpening algorithm um, that's already been baked into there so let's go back to this image here so the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that sharpening and noise reduction are turned off they recommend that you switch your profile to adobe standard now these two all of these images have been shot on the fuji gfx 50r so it's a 50 megapixel fuji camera and i normally have the film simulation set to velvia which is quite punchy because i do enjoy playing with the film simulations in the fuji cameras but this is to a whole new degree so the first thing to do is set it to standard they recommend taking the exposure down by a by a stop um, I've kind of played with that and I'm, I'm actually happier with it just have it exposed how I like it uh, but contrast minus 40 blacks plus 60 does seem to make a distance difference so everything else just go through and check everything else is pretty much set to zero including as I say the sharpening that's really important um, and that's all we need to do really in Lightroom so to enter the app right click on the thumbnail edit in Dehancer exactly the same as you would in Photoshop to get into Photoshop edit and then this is how long it takes now just for the record I'm using an Apple M1 chip MacBook Pro 16 uh, gigabyte of RAM 
and I'm using Ventura, which is the very latest. Now, the first thing I would say I don't like about Dehancer, and I'm sure this is an easy fix for the guys, is that it comes up in this small window every single time. So every single time I have to pull it out to how I like it. Um, so you really want to have it on profiles. Mine comes up as presets and I don't know why. But just to look along the top here, uh, that will remove that if you want a bit more real estate on your screen. This is the settings button, uh, Apple M1 Pro is what I'm doing. And to update the film profiles and when you first log in, you just click that and it will bring in all of the lovely film profiles that it's it's got to to download and they take a they take a while but these guys really know what they're doing and these are these are proper these are not just LUTs this is proper emulation um, which I won't go into there's lots of details on their website have a look at it though so that goes back to the last setting um, that resets everything um, which we have done and and that goes just undoes one and that will redo one so profiles is what we need again presets um, it comes up with dehancer team i'd rather it came up with all presets it doesn't matter when you leave the software with that set it will still come back with the Hanser team um, so again these kind of defaults i think are the things that they need to work on but if we look at profiles tick that okay so that will bring them all up and now we have a choice look at the wonderful things we've got so we've got color negative I've processed thousands and thousands of um, probably hundreds of thousands of rolls of color negative film in my life and those are all of the lovely glorious recipes that they have some of these are very very familiar I used superior before superior i used to use kodak color plus um, i've used ektar portra I used to use that on 120 film um, and 400 to so all of these things look very very familiar to me um, hopefully there's some of your favorites there too and they are constantly adding into them so I'll go through this in a second we've got motion picture so these Kodak vision I don't know as much about videography my, my past my history is in film but I understand that these are lots of films are filmed with these lovely um, emulations and I've just done a, blo a vlog which I've completely graded using these Kodak Vision and again I'll leave that at the end if you'd like to go and have a look at it uh, wonderful things um, we've also got color positive which I used to know as reverse also Kodak Ektachrome and Kodachrome now Kodachrome I used to use a lot as I was learning photography they also did the Kodachrome 25 25 ASA it was in those days now ISO um, and I can tell you that that looks exactly like a Kodachrome file um, looking through the transparency we used to print that out on Cibachrome Ektachrome was always slightly greener look at that and they've got it they've captured it bang on that is so familiar it's like going back in time for me we've also got black and white now um, there's the big one missing for me here and Dehancer if you get to watch this FP4 Ilford FP4 was the film of choice for photographers back in the day it was 125 ASA it gave the finest resolution and the best detail it was a beautiful beautiful film HP5 was equally as good but I tended to go to that if I didn't have quite enough um, light so I would go to that and then XP2 came around much later and you could push and pull that a lot and I'll talk to you a little bit about that in a second and then we have instant film so it even emulates the look of Polaroid look and Fujifilm Instax <laughs> and there's two different things there i have no idea what they are they are but they look very instant that looks like an instant um, polaroid picture to me and then we've got these things now if you're into film i challenge you to go and find this stuff i haven't heard of it until i looked at this emulation but it looks really really interesting and none of this is too bad you wouldn't actually I mean, I guess that's a little bit light, but sometimes presets in Lightroom just look horrible. But any of these, 
I would say, have their place. Really interesting. So those are called exotic, and then we've got cross um, processing. I guess that is uh, Fuji Chrome processing something different, and that even that looks lovely. So if we go back to color negative which is what I'm going to work in today now the next thing down here you can just click on it and what I really love about this is the fact that you can see what it's going to look like so you can literally just go along and browse the one you like so I'm going to choose color negative and I'm going to go with um, let's have a look maybe something like Fuji Superior 200 used plenty of that over the years and it does look a little bit like that so this is my film stock that i've chosen and now you'll see underneath there's a push pull um, ev button or ev slider and what they have done at dehancer they have profiled the correct exposure and this is taken um, spectrographs or spectrophotometers i think they're called um, and lots and lots of analysis of various film stocks that's the correct exposure and then we've got a push of minus two and a pull of minus two. Now, push pull, if you don't know what it means, we used to it'd be easy to show you in this actually. If I look at XP2, now what we would use, what we would do, if it was a very, very contrasty day, you can push or pull, depending on what you're talking about, the processing or the, or the exposure of the film. So basically, if you push it, you're telling. Um, you're telling the camera that you've got 800 ISO loaded and if you are pulling it you're telling it it's got 200 ISO loaded so you're basically over or under exposing it by one or two stops and then to compensate you have to adjust the development time now from memory it used to be something around four and a half minutes development time but if you were to double the uh, ISO to 800 you'd reduce the processing time to about two minutes something around there and what would happen would be and if we look if i did that that's the kind of look you get so we increase the contrast because the film has had twice as much light and you're stopping it to going completely black by cutting the exposure time so that's already and i used to use that quite a lot not so common was this end um, where you didn't expose it for enough so that would be down to 200 ISO but obviously some of the blacks haven't embedded enough some of the detail hasn't embedded enough so that goes very very flat but you can use that and it hasn't just the software hasn't just made it darker and lighter the contrast has also been adjusted along with loads of other things grain etc I mean it's really really fine detail which is amazing so that is what push pull does. Now, if we go over to the right here, we've got along the top, you'll see at the bottom there's a histogram, which I love, uh, and you can get rid of that if you want more screen real estate. There's also a one-to-one, -one, so that puts us up to 100%, so we can have a little look at the blackbird on there, or the crow, I think that is, and there, and then we can take that off. That's what it was originally, and that's coming back again, and that was before. And then cancel, if I cancel it will go back to Lightroom and no changes will be applied but press, press OK as you'll see later it will apply all of the corrections that you made into Lightroom again and then I can finish it off if I want to um, but normally just straight straight out and that will take you back into Lightroom so if we now look down here with this source button um, is to do where well, you can turn them on and off here all of these little tabs you can turn on and off so this is where you can it, you can compensate for the exposure if you haven't done it in Lightroom, but I would recommend that you do it. Having said that, sometimes you might just need to tweak this again. Temperature won't apply to this much in black and white, but if we go back to our um, if we go back to our previous one, which was what did we decide to use? Um, let's go here. Actually, it doesn't matter. Let's go to Kodak Hector. So if we look at this, we can adjust the temperature and that's the same as it would be expected to be. So this way is yellowy, this way is blue. Um, and what's really good is we double click there. Now that's that's changed, I think, in the latest update because that wasn't working. Um, I just like to be able to double click on it and it goes back to zero. You can also reset everything like that. And that takes everything back. Defringe, defringe, radiance, tints. We've got the normal um 
green magenta I think that goes so I'll leave you to have a little play with those film compression um, this is all to do with the dynamic range uh, and making it more analog so if I go to reset that that's what it's recommended to do now I've obviously you can see that I've been turning that off and on again but that works quite well an expansion is uh, expand is you set your black point so that's really looking down here at the histogram um, and you can set your black point and white point and it's probably worth doing that to start with because that's generally the only thing it needs you see that's moving all the white points back in so we've got that and we've also got luma or normal and then this in this is interesting because um, obviously if you've got a digital negative of a color negative you are getting a kind of color and then you have to print it onto paper now that obviously then gives you a different look depending on what you're printing it out onto so there are these most of these are, I think of uh, if you were to print some of those uh, videography um, emulations onto film this is what you'd use we used to print everything onto Kodak and Dura but recommended is linear because this will just bring it straight with no correction for the prints but if we look at these two you can see how it would be affected that's how it looks on Endura a little bit more contrasty I guess and that would have a glossy kind of finish Oops. so I would rather stick to linear because I'm going to print this out onto some um, Canon paper so we'll have a look at it and again you can um, adjust the output uh, of this with the exposure so but again we don't need to do that because I'm going to print this through Lightroom um, density color all of those there is also a correction for and this is why I spent many 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 years doing this so if there was a color cast caused by the lighting then you would take that color cast out by using these corrections so if the color cast was blue we'd add a bit of yellow and that would correct it and if the color cast was yellow we'd add a bit of blue um, a magenta green sign and red um, can't remember what the gang button does I think it does the whole thing together something like that but then we've got also but you can also adjust it in the shadows or the midtones or the highlights so you can actually adjust individually you can adjust the bits that you want to do um, preserve the exposure that's really good because it doesn't darken it or lighten it it keeps everything the same then we've got film grain now this is the interesting bit um, if I go on to one to one here now that's quite a lot to me size of one let's just reset that and that is what it recommends for this particular film um, I personally don't really like grain I've spent most of my life trying to get rid of film grain but I think for the process of this um, this particular um, this particular review what we'll do is we'll, we'll give it some grain and we'll print it out and see what it looks like so let's leave it on its default setting for now and it used to be that you would turn to another color if I turn it off with the presets if you do that it turns back on again but it seems to be all right with film profile so that's really good because I like that so I'm going to leave that turned on normally I'd probably my landscape photography days I have that turned off now these next two are really interesting halation so film I don't know whether you've seen I'm sure if you've used film before you'll know that sometimes around the edges you get little like leaks and they're kind of orangey red um, if there's any highlights that's how it kind of affects the film I've also used to get that with fogging if I turn this on you'll see that around this area here look at that can you see how that there's just a little oranges come up orange highlights come along which is really interesting um, just where and this is where the light is just kicking off these slats might actually be easier if I take the film grain off to be able to see it easier let's have a look yeah you can see it a bit easier like that look and you see how that comes out I love that I think that's brilliant and you can obviously um, in increase that if you want to so the global diffusion makes it worse or better depending on your view it certainly gives you that film effect because we used to get that a lot 
and then the other thing that we have and for this I'm going to show you the lighthouse which is not a hundred percent sharp um, it's slightly out of focus with my depth of field but it works really well so that's normal and if I turn the bloom on can you see how that just softens the highlights so I use on my film camera on my video camera I use a, a pro mist black mist ca um, filter and it's kind of the same kind of thing and in the day we'd have stockings over the lenses a bit of Vaseline maybe um, this is a lot better because Vaseline stockings would diffuse the whole thing and bloom just does the highlights it just gives it that kind of soft glow which is lovely um, so that's a really, really nice. It's also um, a mask mode. I have just read about it. Now that shows you where it's being applied. Look, you just basically see it. Can I do, can I amplify it? it should, there we go. That's where it's being applied on my, on that particular part of the image. That's really nice. That shows you how the mask has been applied, which I love. So let's just default that back to the default. And then vignette, which they recommend that you start with because obviously that's going to that's going to affect it all but um, that's the case I don't know why it's right at the bottom um, the vignette actually I really like I think it works really well but you can see that it globally affects it the whole bit of the image so you definitely would want to be playing with that before you start any other correction and then go back up to the top to look at the exposure compensation so I'm going to turn that off so oops so I'm going to turn that off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bloom on. I'm going to put the halation on. I'm going to add some film grain back in. And that is my finished print, uh, my finished um, file. I'm now going to press OK. I'm going to send it back into Lightroom. And then what we're going to do is we're going to print that out on the print module. OK, so that's all set up in Lightroom ready to print. Check my settings resolution 350 i put sharpening on um i'm gonna put it on to low actually see what difference that makes and we're printing on some canon pro luster um so here we go um let's see what it looks like so while we wait for that to print out let me share with you on the screen my plus points and minus points a dehancer as a plug-in for Lightroom. So here's the finished print and I have to say it looks very film-like and if we look at the halation around here I mean it looks exactly the same as it did on the screen um, but it looks like to me if I just zoom in a little bit it looks very much like it would have done had I printed this out from a 35 millimeter neg wow absolutely staggering <music> So that looked really nice. Let's have a quick go at this one and show you how quickly we can do things. Um, so remember, Adobe Standard Exposure, I'm going to leave on zero, minus 40 contrast, plus 60 on the blacks. Everything else set to zero in Lightroom. Sharpening especially. Everything's looking good there. So the next thing I'm going to do is right click on the thumbnail. I'm going to edit it in Dehancer let's see how quickly we can do this I'm going to convert this to black and white um, I think it suits black and white really well again Dehancer doesn't um, go back to how I had it which is kind of annoying so let's put that back we need to go to the profiles I'm going to go to black and white and I would probably use I quite like a contrasty kind of look that's not too bad one slightly greener one slightly more magenta 
Let's go with the greener one. So this is HP5, 400. Um, I could actually push this a little bit to make it a bit more contrasty, which I quite like that look. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is look at my black point. I'm going to make it a little darker. I'm going to do the black point and white points first, and then I'm going to ex experiment with the exposure. And that look at how fine that is. I think if there was another criticism, which I don't think I've written down, it would be maybe these buttons are very, very sensitive. If there's any way to give them a little bit more latitude, that would be really cool. Um, just to make it easier to work with. That's not too bad at all. Okay, and that is pretty much it. I'm not going to print onto Endura, so let's make that linear. And as you can see, that's not, now gone a little bit brighter, so we might just come down a touch on the exposure. Histogram at the bottom is looking good. Um, don't need to do any of that. Color head's fine. Film grain, maybe. Let's have a look at it up close. Um, I think not too much that process that's just got a little bit of grain so if on a print you just notice this and it might fool you into thinking that that was an actual black and white negative picture good everything else now watch when I put the bloom on just watch the highlights here that's without it that's with it and I'm also going to include the halation. Why not? Cool, great stuff. Not going to worry about the vignettes. Back to full preview. And that is the final print, apart from the fact that what I'd like to do, I press, press OK. It's going to take it back into Lightroom and give me a copy to work on. And all I want to do with this is I'm going to crop it slightly off the right-hand side because I want the eye to be drawn actually over here to this washing and what I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to add a mask and a brush and a brush in let's just show the overlay I don't know why that turns off sometimes um, I'm just going to show I'm just going to lighten this up a touch these clothes because the, I think this is going to be called washing for want of a better title auto masking is on it's doing quite a good job Lightroom as it always does um those ones just one that one there maybe there we go so i'm just going to raise the highlights a fraction so that they stand out a little bit how far can i go with it without but that's quite a long way let's make maybe we need to just bring the whites up okay cool get rid of the mask and there we go that draws the eye straight to that so it doesn't look false so there we go so that's ready for print right let's uh, just sum up for you what i think of the answer so i hope you enjoyed that little look at the answer um, i've been very very impressed with it um, this is the finished print which uh, i've just shown you hopefully if you want to win this then i'm going to give this away i'm going to keep it safe in a box um, and to win it you need to do the following you need to be a subscriber to the channel like this video and in the comments below i'd like you to answer this question what was the black and white film that i said would be my go-to film with black and white back in the day um, that dehancer don't currently have in their stock if you can let me know what that is and i will pick the winner at random um, at the end of march um, so i'll just be in contact if you win that so good luck if you want that print just to sum up Dehancer then, I think if you like using film, if you like the look of film, um, and I still do, I just don't like the chemistry side of it. I had dermatitis, so I used to get allergic to it, the amount of, of chemistry I've had over my hands over the, over the years. Um, I also haven't got a dark room. I haven't got the equipment for it, and some of this stuff is getting really hard to get hold of. So if you like the idea of film, but you don't actually want to use film, this is the thing to get. It, I can guarantee you it looks exactly like you'll get out of a, out of a film camera. So uh, um, the only thing you don't get is obviously the putting the film on. But 
that's what I think it's really good for. So if you like the look of it, I, th I know you'll be happy with it. Go and have a look, download yourself a trial. And if you decide to purchase, then use the code Dave for 10% off. Thanks ever so much for watching. If you haven't seen some of my other YouTube videos, give them a look. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.